I'm Clifton Sanders. I'm Provost for Academic Affairs at Salt Lake Community College. And I've been at the, co I'm ending or completing, excuse me, my 25th year at the college. And um, one of the things that has always fascinated me about being at a place like Salt Lake Community College is the notion of community. I first came here as a chemistry instructor and I was, I was very thrilled over the idea of being able to teach chemistry but interacting meaningfully with all of the other faculty, the rest of the college, and I'm passionately committed to seeing us continue develop, to develop as a community because I think that that is the very best way that we can serve the students that we have, that we know more about each other and that we come together to make decisions about the big picture and that everybody has a role, everybody has a voice, but that we move forward being aware of who we are. Um, and so I've been in this role as a provost for academic affairs starting as interim provost. And um, back in 2014, I prepared to address faculty and academic affairs staff for the first time um, as interim provost of academic affairs. And I wanted to start off my presentation in an, uh, in an unusual way for me. My background is in science, but I wanted to read a poem. So I looked through the uh, English department um, literary magazine called Folio and I came across this wonderful poem about a student that had all of these science metaphors, but it was a love poem. And I was just fascinated by the fact that the student handled all of this science imagery well and just made a beautiful poem. So I asked more about the student and what I found out about the student was that the student was an engineering major who also toured in a rock band during the summer. And that prompted me to think about that student's journey. You know, how, assuming that all of this came as a result of his being at Salt Lake Community College, how this student put together his educational experience and created something beautiful like this poem. And I th thought about it from the standpoint that this student, as many of our students do, have to go through several, if you will, academic neighborhoods or several neighborhoods in the college. You know, when you come into the college and you, and you enroll and you go through orientation, that's a sort of neighborhood. Then if you have to complete your gen ed requirements, so to speak, um, that's another kind of programmatic neighborhood. All of these things have distinct identities and distinct structures and ways of doing things, and yet our students have to make this journey through several neighborhoods to get to their goals. And so this poem made me think about, are we the kind of community that really can facilitate student growth as they move through neighborhoods? And more importantly, because we want to improve, or as President Huftelin says, move the needle on student completion, you know, how do, how do we begin to think at scale? We talk a lot about doing programs at scale or looking at programs and saying, oh, these are boutique programs and these are better programs. I don't really think that that's the way to look at things. I think what we need to do as, as, a, commu as a community is to evolve our thinking so that we think at scale. Because there are lots of wonderful things going on at Salt Lake Community College, particularly this time of year. As provost, I go to all kinds of end of the semester and end of the year student presentations all over the college. And so I have the privilege of being able to take that 50,000 foot view and see all of these neighborhoods at a glance. And I can tell you, there are some outstanding things that are going on. Our, our faculty and staff should be proud and, and, having, and in saying that, knowing where we need to go, I think that learning how to be professionals, and in my area, academic professionals, in community um, is absolutely essential so that we can think together 
at scale. That we can look at the things that we do and ask ourselves the question, how do we impact more students? Or we can ask the question, what are the lessons that we are learning from our programs that we think need to be shared across the board? And how can we create that kind of communal space to have those conversations, to listen to one another, to learn from one another, to imagine ways to innovate and move things forward so that we all possess and own the outcome, and more importantly, that students who go through Salt Lake Community College under, understand how everything connects and, and, and get a vision while they may settle in a major, gen ed is absolutely important. I think gen ed is formative. With um, millennials and Generation Z students, they're not like my generation that works a job for life. They will have several jobs. They'll have several careers. And what's going to tie that, those careers together are how they are formed, not only in departments and in majors, but in the things that we do together as community. They may not see it now, but in their lifelong reflection, it will certainly become obvious in some ways. And more importantly, it will empower them, even if they don't understand how. So, I think that we have a responsibility to be the kind of, st of community that helps to form students so that it's not just an engineering student who happens to be a poet. It can be any student who can integrate all of their learning as they move through Salt Lake Community College and as they move on to transfer, to workforce, to their life, and to their careers. Now having said that, um, a lot has happened since I read that poem in 2014. One of the things that has happened is that, well, the college has changed in certain ways. And if we take a look at the first slide, one significant innovation that has happened with the college is shortly after I gave um, that address, the, we produced with the help of institutional research what I think is the very first comprehensive who are our students report. So why do I think that that is important for forming deep community? Well, as I see it, and I taught chemistry for seven years here, you know, I know the students in my class and those who continue along that path, you get to know those particular students, you know, who are in your major or who are in your clubs. And you form those relationships and you know those students, you know, which gives you an idea about students, but this report, the Who Are Our Students report, gives us the comprehensive overview of the students that we serve. It gives us a holistic understanding. It rounds out maybe what we don't see from looking at the students we have frequent contact with, and it gives the entire college a global view of the realities of students. Um, their struggles, we, you know, we know that, that more than 50% of our students are first generation students. We know that a high percentage of our students um, head households. We know that a high percentage of our students work. We know more about the lives, the circumstances, the challenges, and the obstacles that our students have to go through to come to, to come to Salt Lake Community College, let alone persist through Salt Lake Community College. Um, a colleague of mine who is a poet said something a long time ago where she said to me that our students are courageous because to do what they have to do to even be here is an act of courage, particularly if you're a first generation student. You, you are setting a new legacy with your family and your, and your family and community cheer you on. I believe that students bring their families and communities in their person to the college. And the more that we know about that globally, that should influence how we think about all students and how we think at scale. Some of the things that have happened since then is SLCC Promise, for example, is intended to help, to help make college 
easier for students financially and otherwise. Um, our innovations with equity-minded practitioner um, types of training, diversity training, the, the um, diverse faculty fellows program, all of these programs in my view are our beginning responses to the reality of knowing our students collectively and a desire to build deep community around those, around those principles and to frame what we do understanding the students that we have. So that was, if you will, the first encouragement to this notion that I have about us being professionals in community. Um, the second thing that happened was really the big thing. Um, when shortly after President um, Huftelin was installed officially as president after her interim period, we embarked on a strategic planning exercise that took a whole year. It was a college-wide exercise. And at the end of that strategic planning process, we published the college vision, mission, values, and strategic plan. Now, our vision statement says the Salt Lake Community College will become a model of transformative education, strengthening communities through the students that we serve. And so I look at that as an extension of my thought about being professionals in community, because think about this. If we aspire to be a model, it doesn't mean that any of us, whatever our neighborhoods are, are on the sideline. You know, the, you know, the trick there is, I think sometimes in academia, we, and we think about what we give to students. And I would like to challenge us to think about what we need to, to become for students. So along with our competencies, along with our training, our skills, our expertise, our professional credentials, all of those other things, within the framework of our, of our vision, mission, and values, we are in the process of becoming. We are in the process of reflecting how do we need to, how do we need to change things, including our attitudes, to do, as President Huftelin says, move the needle on student completion, student success. Like I said before, understanding who our, who our students are is a necessary first step. And understanding holistically, understanding the aggregate numbers and understanding how they break, you know, the breakdowns. And what, what we have to become has to address the issue, has to address equity issues. For example, now that we know the ethnic and social distributions of our students, one of the things that we know is that not everyone is achieving and persisting equally. That is an equity issue. The challenge to academic affairs is how do we address that reality? You know, that impacts our teaching, that impacts our view of the classroom, that impacts the choices that we make. And, and I want to affirm this is a great place. We have excellent, engaged, and committed faculty, great programs, and passionate faculty about being here. Understanding who our students are is not a judgment. It is a call to action. It is simply a challenge for us to go deeper. It's a challenge for us to connect, to, to connect more broadly, more holistically, and again, more deeply to take the challenges that students bring to the college seriously in our teaching practice. We want to see, well, I want to see at end of semester se um, celebrations, I want to see more students succeeding. You know, I, I, I want to see all of the benefits that our best students are getting, that our graduates are getting. I want to see that proliferated as much as possible. And so we in academic affairs have to commit to how do we do that, how do we think about that at scale. See, I'm not talking about programs at scale. I don't want to get into that boutique, non-boutique thing. I think that solves itself if we adopt thinking at scale. And we have the perfect frame in our vision, mission, 
values, and strategic plans. From that, we're doing cross-functional work teams called collaborative work teams. We're embarking on big initiatives that involve the entire college. But these are not merely task forces. These are, th these are problem-based ways, if you will, of coming into community. And the outcome from that is when these collaborative work teams, when these task forces are done, it's not that we disassemble, it's that we take the knowledge with us and begin more conversations, advance more of the strategic plan, wrestle with what it takes for us to truly be in the, the kind of community that we need to be to serve students and to serve the community. Um, I tend to, to think of myself as stating obvious things. And when our name is Salt Lake Community College, I think we're tempted to take for granted, yes, we're the community's college. We have it right in our name. Um, but I'm taking that obvious point to say that I feel that we need to go deeper. And that takes work. That, that may take struggle sometimes. There may be things that we absolutely disagree about while pursuing the same goal. We have to work through those things because we have to maintain and model a professional sense of respect, of regard, of mutual support, and also a shared vision about helping students succeed. And, and I think that that's, that's hard work and we have to maintain and sustain those sorts of things. And that's really a big part of what I mean by being in community. And so with looking at knowing who our students are, with looking at our strategic plan and our strategic focus, which is, our, which is really our change agenda, because we have to become, we have to co-create. The last thing that I want to talk about um, is one of those projects that really is a whole college project. Um, for two years, we have been working on a strategic initiative called SLCC Pathways. The purpose of Pathways is to be able to provide students clear direction as they pursue their goals. It's also to help students decide earlier to commit to programs of study and also to move, really to move forward. You know, we have to reduce some of the lateral movement that students do and we have to take responsibility to help students make better and more informed choices because the consequences are real. Um, students on financial aid, if they spend too much time at SLCC and too many courses, it affects them on the transfer end. There are all kinds of practical realities that force us to pay attention to how we do things and what students really need and how we can help. But I did say the Pathways is a whole college enterprise. There are actually three sponsors to the collaborative work team on Pathways. It's myself as Provost of Academic Affairs, Vice President for Student Affairs, Vice President for Institutional Marketing. Why are there three, three sponsors? Because that is the student pathway, if you will. Or that, or that, is, that encapsulates the student experience, or at least the core of it. Um, academic advising and academic affairs and enrollment um, are reorganizing and redesigning to streamline how students come into the college and how they select programs of study. Institutional marketing is um, redesigning how we engage students to enroll. Um, looking at the best ways to design websites and processes so that students aren't confused. And then with academic affairs, we are looking at how we teach and what we teach and how we can align that to, to serve the real needs of our students. Particularly, I'm a first generation college student. I have a son who is in college. When I think about the differences between my journey and I look at his journey, one generation makes a huge difference absolute huge difference. He doesn't have to ask the same kinds of questions that, that, that I ask, or he doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to ask as many people. He can ask me. I can direct him whether he takes my advice or not. I don't know. But at least
but at least I'm a research or a resource for him that I really didn't have. And so as an institution, knowing that we have a large number of first generation students, a large number of students with challenges, we have to develop, we, we have to develop an equity mindedness about what we do if we are really serious about students succeeding. You know, we have to, we have to abandon traditional academic notions of filtering people out because people fall by the wayside for unpredictable reasons and, and, and for reasons that we shouldn't really be a part of. And so we are being intentional so that we can encourage students to be intentional. Our intentionality is very important. Our taking the risk to, to engage one another across neighborhoods, you know, out of, you know, out of isolation, you know, our willingness, our ability to be, you know, to be different, to change who we are, to become what we need to be is absolutely important because otherwise we will be doing what we have done before and we will get exactly the same results and needles will stay stuck. Our community, on the other hand, is on the move. I've been here 25 years. Our demographics have changed dramatically, which means that we need to change dramatically if we want to see success. We can't, we, we, we can celebrate the excellent work that we're doing, but we really do need to move forward. And again, like I said before, I think the best way to do that is to cultivate a sense of being academic professionals in, in community, in vibrant community, in supportive community, in risk-taking community, and in professional community. And so that's my thoughts on that, and I really want to thank you for hearing me out. Thanks.